It's not hard to understand the elevator pitch for Campfire Cozy Friends. A supercharged Animal Crossing with a dynamic conversation system powered by AI, where you're free to say whatever you want. It's an idea that sounds great on paper. In practice, well, let's just say we've played similar games in the past that haven't exactly impressed us. Games where characters respond with creepy artificial voices and offer nonsensical replies which delay quest progression, which disrupts the flow of the game. I'm pleased to report that in our time playing an early build of Campfire Cozy Friends we came away with mostly positive impressions. It's not perfect, the open-ended conversations can sometimes go a bit wonky, but I found it working more often than not and when it worked it really did feel like it was adding something to the game, providing an openness and freedom I've wanted ever since I tried my first Animal Crossing game. After all, who among us hasn't wanted to give Tom Nook a proper piece of their mind when he strong arms you into bigger and bigger mortgages with that sour, miserable look on his face? You arrive at Camp Island as the new concierge, and the guy in charge, Mayor Thompson, wastes no time cracking the whip, meeting you at the dock and demanding you start collecting coconuts. Hold on a minute there, fella. There will be plenty of time for coconut collecting, but two steps off the boat? I'm more interested in looking for my wife, who's been missing for four years. An elaborate backstory I'm eager to inject into the game to give things a little more spice. The mayor, possibly respecting my gumption, offers a compromise. Collect the coconuts as instructed, and he'll set up a search party to scour the entire island. Now, we're getting somewhere. I return swiftly, pockets now full of coconuts. The mayor is ecstatic, but unsurprisingly doesn't set straight off to organise my missing wife's search party. Instead, he's keen to move me on to my next tutorial quest of helping a shy fox fix a purse shop. I remind the mayor of our deal, and he agrees to round up the island's residents to meet at the entertainment centre, a real location on the island, that hasn't actually been built yet because it's a future quest. Campfire Cozy Friends has a habit of writing checks it can't quite cash. The mayor will talk to you about setting up a search party all day long, but it's just not in the game's parameters to actually perform such a thing. Every time we bumped back into each other, I'd ask him how the search was going. Oh, we got distracted by a coconut party. Don't worry, I'm sure she'll turn up. It becomes clear Mayor Thompson has no desire to help me find my missing wife, and I actually start to suspect he may be involved in her disappearance. Quizzing the island's inhabitants on Mayor Thompson doesn't reveal much. They agree he runs a tight ship and seems like a good sort. There are inconsistencies in their story though. I asked someone who the newest resident was, and I'm told it's Valentina, the opera singing cow. A bit more digging, and I find out she arrived on the island at the same time as everyone else. Is it the open-ended AI conversations getting a bit inconsistent? Or have I stumbled onto an elaborate conspiracy? I decide to take the advice of McSleuth, the local wolf detective, who encourages me to follow my instincts and search for clues in the mayor's office. McSleuth clearly isn't in what I've come to think of as Camp Island's secret cabal of founders that likely knows more about my wife's disappearance than they're letting on. One day the mayor hints I should stay away from McSleuth. I point out he's trying to help people as a detective, and the mayor, rather darkly in my opinion, suggests he's a detective by day and troublemaker by night. The wagons are circling. I need to warn McSleuth that the mayor has him in his crosshairs. My list of allies on Camp Island grows short. Obviously there is no actual conspiracy, no cabal, no missing wife, but the game is more than happy to yes and this open-ended storytelling to a degree I find very amusing. You can also affect characters' moods. Weirdly, almost everyone I spoke to seemed to only get sad or angry, but I suppose I was disrupting the peace of the island just a bit. Dialogue is AI-driven, but different characters have different personalities and respond to things differently. When I told my arch-nemesis, Mayor Thompson, I had a severe peanut allergy, he fired off endless nut puns. 
When I told Stephen Sheffington, the island's resident cook, he promised to keep his nuts far away from my food. Characters supposedly even have a memory. If you go into their profiles, you'll see notes made about your previous conversations. We asked Steve Sheffington if he remembered what food we were allergic to, and he incorrectly said coconuts. There may have been some verbal threats, as we pointed out how important it was for the island chef to remember this sort of thing, and to be fair, Steve got it right the next time we spoke. Another time, I embarrassed a friendly raccoon, asking if his wink animation was directed at me, and he sheepishly said it was just dust from the mines we were standing next to. Honestly, the conversation system is very clever and more than a little charming. But not quite perfect though. On a few occasions, characters became completely unresponsive, likely unrelated to me asking them if they'd ever watched the TV show Pretty Little Liars. In one of the later quests I had access to, I was asked by the mayor to have a word with Valentina, the opera singing cow, as she'd been rude to him. Try as I might, I couldn't get her to reveal what she'd actually said to him as the quest instructed, and found the conversation going in circles with her promising to apologise with a song. When I went back to the mayor, he seemed over the whole ordeal, but the quest remained incomplete. The developers have acknowledged the dialogue isn't 100% there yet, but it's close enough for me to give them the benefit of the doubt that the snagging issues will be sorted out by the final release. What gives me slightly more concern is the free-to-play business elements baked into the game. Things like timers on clearing the debris from the island, gaining experience talking to characters, and the premium currency of diamonds makes me think less about Animal Crossing and more about a skeezy mobile game. It'll come down to how things are balanced in the full game, but as these elements were basically turned off in the version we played, it's hard for us to make a sound judgement. With the game clearly targeted at children, it's probably worth being a little sceptical. Speaking of children, on a positive note, the game does a good job of staying away from unsuitable topics. As a test, we try to slip in a few inappropriate things into ongoing conversations, and the game politely nudged us back on track. Nothing like that on Camp Island, let's keep things PG. Talking makes up a big part of Campfire Cozy Friends, but there's also the usual assortment of activities you'd expect in this sort of game, such as fishing, collecting resources, crafting, and the game's website references decorating your dream house. The game is also tagged as an MMO on Steam, and once or twice we did catch what we think were real players wandering about the world, but as far as I could see there wasn't any way to interact as of yet. Campfire Cozy Friends is gearing up to release in early access in just a few short months starting in December if all goes to plan. If you're eager to try it out for yourself, check out the Steam page we've included a link to in the comments below, and make sure to follow the game for future updates. We'd love to know what you make of the game and what sorts of conversations and crazy stories you'd like to see play out, so give us a shout in the comments below with your ideas and why not give our video a like while you're down there. For more top video game discussion, remember to subscribe to Ugly Sofa Gaming.